Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of December 26th, 2025. All right, let's talk about installing and managing VST plugins. To begin with, go up to the studio menu, come down to the option that says VST Plugin Manager, and now we get this screen loaded with all kinds of information. At the top, we have various tabs. One is for the effects. One is for your VST instruments. Now we have one for VST modulators. And then we have the block list. If we go back to the tab for VST instruments, one thing you'll want to observe is the column that says version. Now you can look down this column, make sure that you have the latest versions for any of your plugins. And anytime you click on an entry in this list, it then shows you some extra information down here in the bottom. And one thing that's always good to know is the path of whatever you have in case you ever need to do anything with these VST plugins. And the same thing for your effects. Select any one of these effects. You can come down and see where the main VST folder is. And then we move over to the right where we have these lists called the collections. And these are the effects that will show up anytime you open up an insert effect on a track or a send effect. The highest one and main one is the default collection. This is the one that Cubase creates when it scans through all your different plugins. You can create secondary collections in case you want to trim this list down and have less to get through. Creating different lists for your collections allows you to set up effects so you only get to see the ones that you want to see and you can take away the ones that you don't. All right, let's talk about project handling. You can actually have more than one project open at a time with Cubase. In case you want to copy and paste something from one project to another, you can move between your projects, go to the window menu, and then they're just listed there. But you can only have one active project at a time, meaning only one project can play back and actually allow you to do editing. And that's determined by this little lightning bolt up here on the left. Right now, this one is grayed out. But if I go to my active project, then I can see that lightning bolt is lit up. And of course, you want to get in the habit of making regular saves because you never know when a project is going to crash and you lose all your work. But if you go to edit down to preferences and come down to the option that says general, you can turn on this option for auto saves. Set what kind of time interval you want and how many of those auto saves you want. And then those will go into your current project folder. Sometimes you bring in files from different areas on your computer. But if you have files that are in some other location and you want to make sure that they are in Cubase, you have an option under the media tab. As you come down the list, it says prepare archive. And it tells you right here, your external files will be copied into the directory. And if you proceed, you'll see those files have a new location. And the surest way to make sure that everything is organized, go up to file and then take the option that says backup project. And at that point, you want to create a new folder and give it a new name and then take the option that says select the folder. Then you get these backup options. The first one is, do you want to give your project a new name? You just click on this, type in some new name. Then you have the option to keep the current project active, minimize the audio files, which basically means anything that's not seen really won't get backed up. You have the option to make direct offline processing permanent. That can save some disk space. Remove the unused files. You may have things in your pool that are in the trash. Those will go away. An option to back up or not any video files. Then the option not to back up the mix down folder. Pretty much I leave all these unchecked and the video one is checked. And you just change these as you need to. When you say OK, you can see it backed up. And then when you open that up in your Explorer, you'll have a project file. You'll have a folder for your audio, folder for your images, if any and anything else that's important to that particular project. Then you can archive that project. You can take it and move it to another computer, send it to somebody, or just come back to it any time that you need to. All your files will then be self-contained in that project. All right, let's talk about metering and loudness. As we're in the project view, and we go over to these right tabs, along with our control room and others, we have a special one for meter. And right away, this gives you a visual readout allows you to see your level in various ways. At the bottom of this meter, you have a tab that says master and another one specifically for loudness, which again gives you the loudness meter. We go back to the master meter. At the very top left, we get a drop down list, with all kinds of different peak meters. At the top we can see a digital scale or all these other variations, British scale, various K value scales, some other plus variations on digital scales. Some of these choices also give you an offset value on the right so you can further refine what you're seeing. 
other choices, this area will be grayed out. When you switch over to the loudness meter, the loudness meters read differently than a peak meter. And this little cog wheel allows you to open up the settings and choose how you want to see the different loudness options. What your momentary loudness is, or your short term, the integrated loudness, or your true peak, along with other various settings. And you can save these as presets as well. One thing you're going to want to do, whether it's the master tab or the loudness, is just spend a little time playing your songs and observe the different readings that you get when you change these meters. You're going to see some of them where the zero level is right at the top. You're going to see other ones where the zero level is further down, and you'll have space above that to see options for clipping or whatever. And of course, if you know what you're looking for, you can choose that from the list. But it also will just open you up to understanding the different options, taking a little time and moving through these different choices, and observing how your music looks and what kind of information you can gather from reading the different scale values. And if you're looking for further and complete explanations on all these different subjects, including managing your VST plugins, project handling, or the metering and the loudness, be sure to click the link in the description of this video or stop by the digitalaudiomanual.com for more information. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.